Oh wait. Um, okay, yeah, we, this we is begin. this is the our fifth Esperanto class on July 9th, twenty twenty, and Jane Shefsoff is leading us today. Thank you, Jane. Take it away, Jane. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Hello. 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 Oh, so um, I think today is going to be pretty fun. It's one of my favorite topics in Esperanto, or at least the second part of this. That's why I, um, when Ron offered David and me the opportunity to teach a class, I went for this topic. Um, and um, we're going to be using some interactive polls, which hopefully will work. So I did put a link in the chat. Um, so please open that up in your browser. Can you resend it? I arrived late. I'm sorry. And oh, it's not uh, really sorry. Oh, that's okay. It'll be on the slide. Okay. I'm about to share. Uh, at least I need to be able to share a screen. Oh, right, right. And I was supposed to make you a host. I, I was sleeping on the job. First, I'll give you share oh. screen. Okay, okay, you should be able to share and then I'll make you a host too. Okay. So let's see. Hopefully this will work. Okay, can you all see my slide? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So, because it does have my name, uh, I please go ahead and just open that in your browser. And we're gonna use that to let you answer some questions as we go. Okay? This is something totally new to me. <laughs> uh, yes, it's okay. But, um, I, I've used similar things. I haven't used this one myself, but a lot of my colleagues love it. Now it says, in your browser, open, and then there's the address, but I don't know, how do I do that? Just type the address into your web browser. Or you can copy or, and paste it. Yeah, yes, or you can copy paste from the chat. I also put it in the chat. So if you click on the chat button, it will you'll open up a little window and you can copy it from the chat. Okay. Yeah. Or you can just type it in. Pollev.com. It stands for poll everywhere. Um, slash my name two nine seven. Yeah, I got something that says make up a word from at least two pieces. Oh, uh, okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, We're okay. not doing Fair that right. one yet. That'll be towards the end. Okay. But as long as you're getting something. Okay. Okay. But I don't see you anymore or anybody else. That's fine because I'm sharing the screen. You're going to see my slides. Um, hopefully you can see that little sidebar where I am. No. Okay, but you can see the slides? Yes. Okay, you can play it on the Zoom, but don't worry about it. As long as you can hear me, I think mm -hmm. seeing the material is more important. You know what I mean. Like. I can hear you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And I want to start with some review. And if this technology doesn't work, we can always fall back on other ways to do it. But let's try it this way. So, okay, so go to the website, or if you're on the website, then this should have already shown up. And I'd like you to try translating the sentence Budon Kaptas Kato. Yeah. 
So we click on one of those three? I guess so. Okay. Oh. I clicked. Can you, I, I've answered. Okay. I don't know yeah. if you... I'm seeing, and I, I'm just seeing a graph of all the answers. Can't change your, you can't change your answer. <laughs> you can't change so, your answer. Okay. I changed my answer, but I can't do it on this. Okay. Oh. So, um, somebody who said that it means a cat catches a bird. Can you explain why you answered that? Yeah, because the bird is the object with an O-N at the end. Exactly. And, and it's the N on the end that tells you that the bird is the object. Perfect. So that's a bit of a view from, from last time. So, um, so just to review, the big, we call this the accusative. <laughs> if you keep learning Esperanto, you will hear that word a lot. You might as well get used to it. And basically, it designates the target of an answer, of a sentence. So what the simplest way to think of it is in the direct object. So something is being eaten or caught or read. But it also has other uses like a place where you are going. Uh, me iras heimen iras means going. I am going home. I am going to my home. So that's another use. There's a few others that um, you will see later if you keep learning Esperanto. But if you, if you think of it as the target of an action, that captures most of the uses of the accusative. That's the basic idea that designates some kind of target. But for now, we're only gonna think about the direct object case. Any questions? Which brings us to the verb estas, which just means to be. So um, it's I am, you are, it is, you know, which in Esperanto, there is no change among any of those cases, it's me estas, v estas, g estas, doesn't matter. So obviously that's a word you see a lot. So here's a little question for you all to think about. Try translating this. I am a woman. Make your best guess as to which of those is correct. Oh. Hmm. We'll discuss it after you answer, but I'd like to get your best guesses first based on what you already know. So far, only one person has answered it. Yeah. So just think about it and make your best guess. 
I don't see how to answer right now. How do we answer? Yes. Yeah, I have to go back to that other window, go to the survey and click on the box. You know, you have to switch your window back to that uh, poll, polled.com. Yes, and on all of these questions, the address is always at the top, so you can, if you need it again. I can, I can probably do that. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see it, I see it, I see it. Where do I go back? Where? Just open the, open the browser where you have the poll, and it should already be there. Well, I don't know how to do it just now, but anyway. Yeah, just type in, just type in the address into your web browser. I, I don't think he knows how to get to his web browser when he's in Zoom. I think that's the problem. Ah, um, try the alt tab trick that we used before if you had it open before. Oh, Otherwise, yeah, good don't one. worry about it. How about everybody else? I also don't understand how to do this. I can tell you what the right answer is, but I have no idea what, how I'm supposed to operate in this framework. Um, the right answer your web, is A. Do you have your web browser open? My web browser. I, all I've got yeah. open is my window looking at what's going on. Um, were you able to respond to the first question? I don't think so. Okay, then just go ahead and open your web browser then. I don't know what you mean when you say open your web browser. What do ah, I do? Okay, my web the web, your web browser Pardon. is the program which you use to be online. So it might be Firefox, it might be Google Chrome, it might be Edge, it might be Safari. I don't know what you use but it's whatever software you use to browse the web. I went on my cell phone. Okay, yeah, you can use your cell phone. That'll work. But I'm looking at you with my computer, so. Okay, yeah, you can then you I don't have, have a different to, device. You can use that. I don't have to go back and forth. I can just be on my cell phone. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, that's one way to do it. If that works for you, that's great. Yes. Um, we have one person who was able to answer. Who was that and how did you do it? Me. That was Don. Oh, I answered it too. I answered it too, eventually. Oh, <laughs> this question, the I am a woman? Yeah. yeah. But I'm only seeing one answer. Oh, oh. We all answered the same, maybe. Yeah, I answered no, it. No, it too. says one. Okay, oh, let's turn I answered one it. More. Mine is, is highlighted. It says responding as DP, Donna Park, and I have okay. it in blue. I'll try to answer the other way and see what happens. Yes, that's what other way? way? Now ah, you, yeah. Okay, so I that's oh, okay. I think I see the issue. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and switch your answer back. Okay. I, I see the problem. That was my mistake. Okay. Okay. Hey. So you all answered. Yeah. So you all got it right. I completely failed to fool you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you taught us well. I was hoping that the woman wasn't wasn't a target of an action here. <laughs> right. So, so this is the, where this is where the, the idea of target of an action helps. So I think it's more intuitive and it explains a lot about how Esperanto actually works here. Right. I, you all got it. I, I wish I had a dictionary where I could, you know, find the words easily. I'm uh, um, having difficulty searching, searching, searching on different pages. Ah, uh, you should, so try to remember first. If you can't remember, then go ahead and look back at your old lessons. We can talk about dictionaries toward the end of the class. So, as you all figured out, there's no accusative after SS. Also, a few other words that you don't know yet, but 
just keep this on your radar. Another big one is Felici, which means be calm. Now, we can also combine um, na nouns and adjectives. And adjectives in Esperanto always end in a. Ah. So, granda means big. Uh, sana means healthy. Um, so, granda fish means big fish. Now, so here we have a basic sentence. Kato kaptas grandan fishon. What does that mean? A cat, um, a, a cat catches a, lar a large fish. Perfect. A cat catches a large fish. Now, somebody else. How about the second sentence? A cat captures a bunch of fish. <laughs> a bunch of <laughs> large fish, yes. Multiple fish. Huh. Multiple big fish. <laughs> Many fishes. Now, somebody else wonder about this one. Cowboy captures grand fish on. Bob, if you're talking, you're on mute. I see your mouth moving, Bob, but you're on mute. Bob, yes. heard are you? Yeah. Yes, I'm back. I'm, I'm with it again. Multiple cats catch one fish. Yes, multiple cats catch one big fish. And the last one. Multiple cats catch multiple fish. <laughs> yes. Multiple big fish. Big fish. Cool. So notice that I can't say granda fishoy. If I make the noun plural, I gotta make the adjective plural. Granda fishoy. Um, if I we make the noun accusative, I gotta make the adjective also accusative. Could you say the um, um, cats, cats, plural, catch big fish? Could fish um, mean pl plural as well as a fish? Okay, so in English, we use fish as both singular and plural in Esperanto. <laughs> Fisho means a fish, a single fish. But could you um, translate fish oin as fish? Yes, fishes, like plural. I think Fish. sometimes in English, you can say fishes when you mean more than one. Yes. Well, you can say fish and mean more than one. They catch sometimes. fish. Yeah. So in, in Esperanto, you don't get this ambiguity. Fish show is always singular. If you want to make it plural, it has to be Fishoy. Fishoy. You have to say a fish. Cattle. Yeah. So the third <laughs> sentence is cats, I guess together, catch a big fish. They had to team up to do it. And the first sentence, <laughs> in the first sentence where there's no plurals, you see that fish on is the object that gets the accusative, it gets the end. So for that reason, the, um, the adjective describing the fish, granda, also gets the accusative. Uh, excuse me, Simon, I have, I have to leave this, um, uh, this uh, session. 
I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, so does anybody have questions about this example? Bob, are you asking a question? I can't hear you. No. Oh, you're not. Okay, you're just practicing. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Then in that case, um, uh, Donna, do I have host? Yes. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms of about two people and you see this series of sentences. What I'd like you to do is pick some words you know, and you can use the handouts as a reference. Pick, you know, two nouns, a verb, and an adjective. It can be, you can be as silly as you want. And make up a series of four sentences following this pattern. Okay? okay? And I'll give you a several minutes to work on that together. And I'll be going in and out of the breakout rooms if I can make breakout rooms. Hold on. Hold on. Technical difficulties. Just a second, please. Um, I am trying to do breakout rooms. Is it not working? Hold on. I just come to come. I don't know why this is here. I don't think uh, co-hosts can do breakout rooms. Uh, okay, so Donna, I might need you to put people in breakout rooms. Okay. Sorry, uh, I'm going to go back to that slide. So we want, how many rooms, how many of us are there? How many rooms uh, do you want? How many people are here? I think it's like eight. Um, there are eight of us, so four rooms. Can I just do it automatically? Yeah. Or you want to? No, okay. no, let's do it automatically. Oh, somehow. Okay, Brenda's in a room by herself, so I'll go there with her. Okay. So um, if you... Um, I haven't gotten an invitation. Actually, well, I haven't opened the room. Uh, you and Ron, you and Ron are together, so the two of you maybe could get out of that room and go somewhere else. Yes. That maybe I should. Sense. I'll um, I'll make Ron a co-host too. Can co-hosts move around? Uh, All right. I made. I made. You have to move them, Donna. I have to move them. Okay. Oh, I'll them. make Jane host. I'll make Jane a host. Make host. Jane, you're now a host. Okay, thanks. I you're... promise not to. You know. Yep. Okay. And now I didn't assign the rooms. I, I, before I hit open the rooms, I made you the host. So you have to do it again. Okay. Let's see if I can do that now. I got um, just a second. I think you, you should just do three rooms. A couple rooms will have three people, but that's otherwise fine, somebody a, will be alone. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh -huh, yes, now I'm getting the breakout rooms option and I'm gonna put you all into one, two, three rooms. Okay, here we go. And I'll give you, a, so just click the join button that should show up on your screen. I see Charlie's already in one, Donna. So you should get a button on your screen with the invitation. Um, Brenda, are you having any difficulties? Uh, Leo. Yeah. Leo. Are you going to join the breakout room? Yeah. Okay. No.
Okay. That was now. fun. I've never I've never been in a breakout room before, Jane. I loved it. Yeah, I never either. That's the first time for me. Here's my second cool. time. No. Oh. Um I can't hear anybody. Let me oh. leave and come back. I'm done that hmm. you have hosts, so that should be fine. Oh no, I don't have oh you made me host you again. Oh good, okay. Okay, all right. We'll start sharing sentences. But Brenda Go ahead hasn't and come start back. Sharing all all right. I'm having a Okay. Time. So Leo, Ron, and I were together and oh. our sentences were ma okay. Mal Ma <laughs> Mal Bella Canabo Faros Bonon Kukon. That was our first one. So it means an ugly boy makes a good cake. <laughs> uh, then Mal, 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 Bella, Canabo, Faros, Bonon, Kukon. An ugly boy makes good cakes, plural. Mal, Mal, Bella, Canaboy, Faras, Bonon, Kukan. Ugly boys make good cakes. Oh, good cakes, singular. And Mal, 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 Bella, Canaboy, Faras, Bonon, Kukan. Ugly boys make good cakes, plural. Nice, I like it. <laughs> okay, group two. Let's hear somebody from group two, maybe Mike. Okay, Bob, I'll do the first two, and you can read it up. Bella insecto, which means what? Beautiful insect. Manjas, which isn't on our list, but Jane gave us that. Manjas, I'm sure you would know what that means. Manja. Eat. 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 Varmon, excuse me, Varmon Panon. Warm bread. Yes. Perfect. Then hmm. Bella Insecto Manjas Varmine Panoin. And then the other two would, I'll start with Bella Insectoi Manjas Varmoin Panoin and Bella Bella Insectoi Manjas Varman Panoin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful insects eat warm breads. <laughs> yeah, so maybe there's multiple kinds of bread. Multiple like, loaves of bread like that these bread. insects yeah. are eating. Okay, no, excellent. And Brenda and John. All right, Brenda, do you want to start? Yeah, Brenda, let's hear you. Her, her internet's in and out. I don't know ah. if she's hearing us. Okay, so do you want to share what two of you came up with? Oh, she's back now. Okay. Brenda, do you want to do the first two and I'll do the second That's two? That's so hard. Yeah. Okay. Oh, she's out again. Okay. Charles, just go ahead and do it That's because I... Still okay. have so we did Edzo Havas Tasson. Edzo Havas Tasson. So a a husband has a cup, a husband has cups. Edzo Havas Tasson. So husbands have a cup, which I guess they'll fight over. And then Edzo Havas Tasson. Husbands have uh -huh. cups. Okay, good. And maybe we can throw in an adjective, like maybe it's a big cup. Yes. And so have us grand on Yeah. Okay. So now that you all had some practice combining nouns and adjectives and also with using the accusative, does anybody have questions about what you just did? Okay, good. Then, um, hold on, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. And now, 
we're gonna get to my personal favorite part. Which is wood building. So the really cool thing in Esperanto is that you can build words out of pieces. And we do this to some extent in English, but Esperanto takes it to a new level. Um, where it's explicitly designed so you can combine prefixes and suffixes and roots and grammatical endings and make up new words. And first of all, it cuts down on memorization. You don't have to memorize as much stuff to get a working vocabulary. And second, if you don't know a word, you can kind of make it up and that's a valid thing to do. <laughs> I remember um, that's actually, you are explicitly allowed to do that. If it makes sense in context, it's a valid Esperanto word. I remember one time I was talking about needing to charge something like an electric device and I didn't know the word for charge. So I said that I needed to electroplenigi it, which is to make it full of electricity. <laughs> which it's not the standard word for charge, but it conveyed my meaning effectively. So we're going to start doing that today. And this is a theme that continues. So an Esperanto word will have some combination of prefixes, roots, suffixes, and then it always has the grammatical ending. That's the O or the R or the E that tells you, is it a noun, an adjective, a verb, what is it? So the classic example of building up words this way, I think I'm required by law to show you this, is malsanguleo. Okay, that's a bit of a mouthful but let's break it down. Malsanule. Now, ulo is a new one. You haven't seen that one yet. It's a suffix that refers to a type of person. So let's break down this mouthful. Mal, which we're gonna talk a lot more about, just means un, or it means the opposite of something. Then, sun refers to health. Sana is healthy. Sano is health. Then, u or ulo refers to a type of person. And then, a refers to a place. And the o tells you it's a noun. So let's put this together. If sana is healthy, what would be mal sana? Mal sana. Not healthy, not healthy. Unhealthy, Unhealthy or sick? Sick. Uh huh. So then, what would be a mal sanulo? Just person. a person who is sick. Uh huh. A, a person who is sick. And then adding ayo makes it a place. So it's a place for people who are sick. Or oh. AKA a hospital. Wow. Yeah. And that's just an example of how we can make words in this way. 
It's probably the most classic example of this. Me? So, in order to do this, you need to know some prefixes and suffixes, and they are important to learn because they increase your vocabulary so much for so little investment. So, oh, I should have put, I put the hyphen in the wrong place on this one. It should be at the end. So, ma is a prefix. This means the logical opposite of something. So, um, ma, so if nova means new, ma nova means old. Um, and you've just seen mal sana, unhealthy or sick. Um, what about Mal Bella? You know, Bella means beautiful. So, what should Mal Bella mean? Ugly. 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 So, most of you use Mal with adjectives and adverbs, but sometimes it works for nouns. Like, amico is friend. So what does mal, what's a mal amico? Enemy. 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 Perfect. Mal oh, amico. So that's a useful one. <laughs> Another one that you see a lot, and this is why I added le learners to your list of verbs, because it's such a good example. It's also a useful word is, okay, le, uh, is ao, which we already said is a place for something. So, le neo is a learning place, aka a school. Le neo. Um, uh, if kafel is coffee, what do you think cafeo is? A uh, coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, a coffee shop. And in fact, in the Duolingo course, that's one of the first words you learn is cafe and cafeo. <laughs> I think that says something about Esperanto culture. <laughs> so, um, let's see. If Vendi is to sell, that was one of the verbs on your list. Vendi. What's a vendeo? A store. A store. A place where things are sold. Now, store is one of those things that has multiple words. So you can also use others like patico. There are subtle differences, but vendeo is a good example of Vendi to sell plus Ao. Store. Ao, place. So it's a selling place. A store, maybe a market. It's usually used to mean store. So, okay. So go ahead, we've already done a little bit of this, but try, try the poll, try typing in your answer. And you can look back at the handout. Very. Uh -huh. Dirty. Yes. Yes, now the poor is dirty because poor is clean. Uh-huh. Very good. Okay, one more. Oh, we already did Vendale. Okay, we'll skip that one because we already did it. Yes, it's sound nice. Okay. 
So let, let me check the time. Let's see if we have time for this. Make up a word. Yeah, let, let me give you. Let's do breakout and look in just quick. Make up a word that makes some kind of sense. I'm done. If you could handle the breakout rooms, because I seem to have to not be host. Oh, okay. oh sorry. Um, I want me to make you? A, I'll make you a host. Make you host. Can, You're a host well, again. Let's just do this together. Since we're running a little okay. low on time, let's do this part together. Would Kukeo be coffee shop? Um, it could be, or maybe a bakery. Bakery, okay. Yeah, because Kukan's a, is cake, right? Kuka? Yeah, Kukeo is coffee shop, so maybe a Kukeo. I don't think that, I don't know if that's a standard one. I don't think it is, <laughs> but it could mean a bakery. <laughs> and, and if you're talking in a context way, we have some shared contact with the person you're speaking with. Um, then that would make sense. Okay, somebody else, give me another one. Limonadeo. Limonadeo. A lemonade, a lemonade stand. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. How about something with mall? Did somebody give me something with mall? No. Um, Someone who hasn't spoken in the last couple of minutes. And some of these words that we might make up might have other more standard words that are normally used. That's fine. Um, I just want you to practice making up words. Wow. So, um, um, Bob, any ideas? With Malo? Okay, Malo. and what would, what do you think Malo by itself would mean? Evil? Ah, okay. Badness. So, this is where we have these associations because in English, Mal comes from Latin, and usually it does if it's something bad. In Esperanto, it just means the opposite. So bad is the opposite of good. What's the word for good? Bona. 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 Uh -huh. bona. So what would bona. evil be? Bona. Mal bona. Yes, mal, mal bona. bona. Malbona as an adjective. Adjective. Malbona. Yeah. Um, so th that's bad. Or... Now, malo by itself actually is a word. It means opposite. Spell, can, spell that word. Can... I don't understand that word. Mal. Mal. M -A -L -O. Oh. So we take the prefix that makes opposites and just slap an O on it, and then it becomes opposite. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yes, that actually is a valid word that means opposite. One more, let's do one more. How about mal libereo? Ah, okay, that one's ambitious. You wanna break it down, Chuck? So mal is the opposite. Uh, libera is free. Okay, that's a new so, word. It's a good one to, yeah. to know. Libera. One, one that's fairly easy uh -huh, to, yes. to remember. And AO yes. is a place. So it's a unfree place. So it's a jail. Hey. Oh. Yep, that's Mal another classic Mal along yeah. with Malsanuleo. Yep. Yes. Malibereo. And it's a little easier because it only uses three pieces. Good. What about uh, something like sukero? If you said mal sukero, would that change well, sukera? What the, so what would be the uh, opposite of sugar? Like bitter? Or mm, or so the kinds of opposites that we're talking about here are logical opposites. Uh -huh. So, so 
A dog is not Mal Malkato, <laughs> even though we might think of dogs and cats as opposites in some sense. So um, I actually don't remember the word for bitter. Um, Ron, do you? Or Chuck? But I doubt. So sweet is dolce. But I don't think Mal Dolce is a thing. But again, you maybe that's a way to make yourself understood. If you yeah. want to complain that something is bitter, you don't remember the word. Yeah. It would be more like saying it's not sweet. Giestas mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, yeah. Or, for that, you would say ne dolce. You would, you? yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Ne negates something without making it an opposite. But yeah, that's a good attempt. Uh, so uh, well, so if I might, if I can't remember the word for bitter, maybe I would say Mal Dolce, even though that's not the actual word, and probably the person I'm speaking with would get it in the context. Oh, um, la cuco estas Mal Dolce, the cake is bitter cake. <laughs> How about uh, okay. lave, laveo? Being a laundromat, laveo. Ah, could be, could be, yeah. Or wash. How, how about chivalo edo? Chival, yes. And in that case, we might drop the O from chivalo, chivaleo. And chivaleo? what would chivaleo be, according to you? Stable. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. So you get the idea. And as you learn more prefixes and suffixes and roots, you can either get creative with it, and it also you can part. use it to understand things you see. So I want to spend the last couple of minutes on some homework problems that you're going to see. So this is from the homework. I'm not going to go through the whole thing with you. I will send out an answer key in a couple of days. So, and it's just a bunch of translation sentences. And so the first one, we can just go word for word. A healthy boy drinks warm milk. Sana knabo vendas fireman lakfon. Isn't that sells instead of drinks? I thought drinks was oh, drink. I'm sorry. Drink, drink out. Yes, this is what I get when I make up slides too late in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch, Donna. If you went my if you went to class, I'd offer extra credit. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Imaginary extra credit. Okay, so, and what should it be, like you said? Drink, trink, trinkos. Yes. Trinkos. Good catch. Trinkos. Fix that before trink. I post the slides. Um, then, what about number two? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Thank you. La Nova Boutico Vendas Sectian Cucum. Coin. Yeah, coin. Excellent. And I like how you remembered to make the adjective plural. That's one thing that's a challenge for English because, because we don't do that in English. Okay, last one for today. The big teacher met the new friends. Who wants to give that a shot? Brenda, we can't hear you. We can almost hear you. Go ahead. Now, I didn't put law, but I put Granda and Truisto, Recontis, Nava. Recontis? Uh huh. Recontis, Nava Han, Amikon. So, how many friends are there? Is there one or more than one? Um, more than one. 
Okay, good. So how do you make amico plural? Amico. O-J-N. Amico. Yes. Uh-huh. And for V, you use la. Yeah, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Okay, yeah. I think it's in the text somewhere, but they didn't make a big deal out of it. So. Okay, so please, now that we've had this discussion, please um, read through the PDF and then do the rest of the exercises. And I'll send out the answers in a few days. But it's best if you do them yourself before I send out the answers. Because then your brain can't go, oh, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> I don't know it. Do we <laughs> well, I think you're learning it. Yes. You did well on that. So it, it is 4.30. Do we want to say anything about the next class next next time? Um, that's lesson three, right? That's right. And it will be about adverbs. That will be the emphasis. But you can all read lesson three. And after you read the lesson, you can try your hand at the exercises. Okay, and so you've then, got two sets of exercises, so maybe do these first, then read lesson three, and then do those. Yes, we, next time we can talk about the exercises for lesson two, as well as the exercises for lesson three, if anybody has any questions about them. Okay. okay. When do we get to do dangling participles? <laughs> Not really a thing. Never mind. Not a thing in Esperanto, huh? <laughs> Good. 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 Jane, that's I, right. For be a helpful. <laughs> Thank me, you. Me, me joyous, Jim. I need joy, joyous, Bobby Vian in Struaton. Duncan. Duncan. Dankon, that must mean, does that mean thank you? It does. Yes. Dankon. Yes. 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 Um, what is it? Dankon? Gis la Gis. Dankon. Dankon like ends in O-N? Why is that thank you? Is uh, that O-N? Is it accusative? That's it's a accusative. That's like oh, salutat. That would be a thanks. When you say Dankon, it means I extend to you thanks. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you can think of it as an abbreviation of a sentence, but oh. it's one of those things that you can just kind of dunk on, salute on. What's hello Duncan. and goodbye? Hello and goodbye. Yeah. Um, hello is usually salute on. There's another one that has the N. Salute the, the most common way of saying goodbye is Gis Vido, which basically means until we see each other again. And that's often shortened to just geese. Yes. Which literally geese? means until. Geese. Say, say it again, geese. Do the same thing geese? in Russian. Paka. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, geese. Geese. Yeah. Which, so. All right. Yeah. Geese. 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 Geese and peace. Geese and peace. Yeah. Geese and peace. Geese. Hatso. Thank you. Yes, Gislavinon. One week from today. Yes. All right. Duncan. Duncan. Uno semino. Oh, let's see. Jane, you want to stop the recording? I guess it will stop automatically when I hang up. 